What's happening graphic designers? In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to design a really cool type of layout and those are basically door hanger tags that you can leave behind for potential business. Welcome back everybody to another episode of the Graphic Design Layout Bootcamp where in every episode I take a logo that I designed in my previous series which was fictitious and I give it a purpose in this series. I put it on some type of a graphic design layout that you're eventually going to be asked to do for a client. So why not teach you all different types of layouts in each episode? If we jump back to episode number 19 of the Logo Design Bootcamp, I designed a logo for St. Patrick's. Now that logo I changed around a little bit and I decided to design a door hanger that you can leave behind for uh, local offices or, or people that might be interested in the company and having a coupon on it. So um, in this episode, you're going to learn a lot of things. Check out some of the things you're going to learn. And the very coolest thing about this entire series is that aside from the images, I provide you with the entire vector file that I designed in Adobe Illustrator and the purpose of that is that you can follow along in this entire tutorial and then you can go and use your own images in that. So let me get started on this tutorial right away. Okay so with this door hanger design what really makes it a door hanger is something very simple. It's the die cut that is at the top of it because if that die cut was not there uh, the circle and then that little line going through it which separates the pieces so they can hug around a door handle if they were not there this is basically be like a rack card um now this um is something that you want to check with the printer uh you are um going to be sending these files to or um you know most printing companies they could do a custom size but the printer might have a template that's specific to them and they can only do that one size so you want to check it with them um, in this in this uh, tutorial, I've actually done a, a couple of door hangers recently. Uh, it's pretty funny because I've never done them before, and I've done like three in the last month. And then this is the tutorial I put together because I had this on my mind, the door hangers. But um, the standard size I've been using is three and a half by eight and a half. So I'm going to obviously continue to use that in this video. Um, on the bottom here, you're going to notice there's a perforation. Uh, that goes to obviously both sides, which means that they can tear off whatever kind of an offer is going to be on that, which is, um, you know, something that they would have to obviously take in, whatever the stipulations on it say. You know, you want people coming into your place uh, or you want to suggest that. So you want to make sure it says something like, you know, um, you know, bring in or must be pre coupon must be present at time of order or whatever. Um, OK, so like I said, there's a front and a back. Uh, to this door hanger. Uh, the front is really right here on the left where you really want to hit them with a nice image or two um, and the logo and some important points. I put we deliver at the top. Uh, but basically what you're going to learn in this tutorial um, is how to work with images, um, images that you purchase stock photos, how to work with type, uh, how to um, work with a font that's not particular particular uh, particularly great on specific letters like the D I, I'll show you what I did to that to you know I had to kind of augment that a little bit so it was readable because some of these funky fonts you really can't read what they look like but anyway um, so we're gonna work with images we're gonna work with type we're gonna work with you know um, basically images and type and uh, and laying out some gradient stuff and um and that's it so let me first jump into uh starting to build this layout okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to go on the internet and find images or purchase stock photography to use in this design layout now there are three images that i have purchased and i am using um but they're most likely going to be different from the ones that you're using and that's okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm literally just going to drag all three of these jpeg images that are, i have downloaded at a very high resolution um into this uh, into Photoshop so now I can alter them to be working correctly with the layout that we have now the layout that we have is three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches high now you want to make sure that the image looks good on that size piece but then again we have such a large resolution image right now that can look good at you know 60 inches in width or something like that you know we'll look in the image size in a second but we want to save this so it is a correct size for the particular layout that we're using. So what you first want to do is to all three of these images, you want to come up to image, 
mode and change that to CMYK color. I'm going to do that to all three. One, two, change mode, CMYK color. Okay. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into image, image size. And I'm going to make any changes to these images because I believe, you know, they're, uh, they look pretty color corrected and, and the way I want them to be because they're stock photos. And normally stock photos come out and they look perfect. Um, you know, um, cause they go through a rigorous process of, of, um, um, determining if it's, if it's good enough for the site. So image size right here, it's showing our dimensions is really about 46 megs, this one file. So we want to change that. We want to change that. Um, and we want to keep our resolution at 300. So I'm going to change my width of each of these to three and a half. All right. And so it's saying it's going to look its best at three and a half by two. You know what? I'm actually going to uh, go a little bit more. I'm going to do four. So it really brought that back from about 47 megs to about four megs. And it kept the 300 resolution on it. So we're going to hit OK. And if, if I come back in here, you can see, still see it's nice and crisp. All right. Same thing with image two. I'm going to do that four. Image three. Cool. And now we're going to save all these as PSDs. So I'm just going to save as, I think I called them image, image one, two, and three, image one, two, three dot PSD and do save as. One, two, and number three. Cool. All right. So now if we look in our folder, we're going to have image one, two, three PSDs in there. Now we can work them into our Illustrator layout. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 is we're going to come up to File, New. We're going to start on a new document. Uh, you could call it letter S for now, or whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, we're going to make two artboards, and we're going to make this size, okay? It's going to be a custom size. We're going to change the units to inches, and the size is going to be three and a half. And then it's going to be eight and a half in height. Now it is going to bleed an eighth of an inch, 0.125 on all four sides. So that's what you're going to want to set right there. You want to just make sure in advance this is CMYK 300 PPI, and we're going to hit OK. And now we have our two artboards. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to come up here to document setup, and I'm going to hit edit artboards. And I'm just going to move this one out of the way because it's kind of in, in my obstructing my view here. And if you hit command colon or semicolon, you're going to see it turns off those the, those red guides. And those red guides are showing where the bleed, bleeds are going to go. And I'm just going to leave them off for now because I don't like to work with too many things obstructing my view. That's just how I work. Um, you might be completely different. That's fine. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces of artwork and I'm going to copy them into this document. Okay, and I'm going to do one at a time. We're going to start with the front. Now, what I would like to do first is I would like to come into layers and I'm just going to create a new layer on the top and I'm going to call that die cut mark. All right. And now I'm going to that is going to be where I put that circle and that little thing that, you know, cuts off. But if you are designing this, you want to check if somebody has, if the printer you're going to be providing this file to has a template for this, or if you found a custom template on the internet, many printers, they don't need, they, they can do anything custom basically. So they can, you know, do any kind of shape custom. Um, so you're not going to be limited to a specific template in general, but um, basically this is the template that I picked out. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally, uh, I'm, we're going to pretend I just opened this up as a, a template. Okay. And I'm just going to nudge that up and I'm going to delete all the stuff in the back. And right now I'm going to leave that as white and I'm going to actually make sure that goes right there. And I'm just going to copy that over right over here and basically center it, you know, by eye. So that basically means if I put anything behind this, it's going to show up in front and you'll see that in one second. I'm going to take that die cut layer. I'm going to hit lock so nothing um, can get messed up on it. And on layer one, we can even rename this uh, artwork. You're going to notice that the way that I like to work is, um, and some people might say this is the wrong way to work. Some, 
you know some people um, after a while they'll you know you'll get to this this type of uh, working style but I don't really use layers for everything you know if we have images and text I'm not putting them on different layers because once you learn how to unlock and lock your keyboard command shortcuts you can breeze through graphic design layouts as you're thinking of ideas you know you're not constantly coming over here clicking unlock you know you're working on one layer and that's how I like to work in Illustrator so let me know in the comments below if uh, if you feel the same way about that but what I want to first do is I want to come up to the rectangle tool and I want to make a rectangle pretty simple right um, I want to make sure that rectangle is that green right there and you know what? let me just do something else I'm gonna to go to view and I'm gonna turn my guides off I like the smart guides um, like I said there's only uh, I like to work on a very bland canvas because once you know all the keyboard command shortcuts you're not gonna to need to um, have all those on but anyway I'm going to uh, take this box I just made and I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard or come over here to the eyedropper tool I'm gonna to select this green right here now I'm going to Let's see something really quick okay so what did I do here all right this is this is this is good education right here I'm going to unlock the die cut layer because I never actually put anything on it I'm going to now select this circle I'm gonna select this line and now I'm gonna select this one over here and you're gonna notice there is a blue outline around them I'm now going to come over to this little blue box right here I'm gonna drag it to the top and it's gonna turn everything red that means it's on the die cut mark layer I'm now gonna lock that so I can turn it off and turn it back on so anything I design on artwork layer which is the blue layer is going to appear behind that which is great um, the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make two boxes and I'm gonna make them uniform height um, I'm gonna zoom in here for a second so you can see what's going on in this layout what I did was I basically had a, had this box I had this white to um, break it up because if it hugs it it looks a little bit different than as opposed to it breaking it up I like it breaking uh, it to be broken up like that um, let's see I'm going to come into here and I'm gonna just make sure that comes all the way over with my direct selection tool selecting that line and for right now so you can see what I'm doing I'm just gonna fill this in black and I'm gonna go to option click I'm gonna shift this down and make I'm making basically two of them The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into File, Place. And I'm going to come into my, where did I do that? It was Untitled Folder, my PSD files that I made. And I'm going to, which one is going to be the first one? One, two, it's going to be Image 3. I'm going to place that right there. And then I'm going to go to File, Place again. And I'm going to go to Image 1. PSD. All right. What we're now going to do is we're going to send both of these images behind the black boxes because that's the only way you can make a clipping mask. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select both of these boxes, go to Object Arrange, bring. Oh, excuse me. Object Arrange, send to back. And now what we're going to do very simply is we're going to select the black box and we're going to hit Shift. And now we're going to select the image so we can select both of them at the same time. We're now going to either right click and go to make clipping mask or go to object clipping mask make or command seven. So there's three different ways to do that right there. Um, command seven actually would have been the quickest way. Um, so now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to hit command seven nice and quick like that. And if you notice, if I use my regular arrow, it's going to move the entire thing. What I want to do is hit a on my keyboard and we're going to um, now be able to just modify the image in the middle and later on at the end of the tutorial I'm going to show you how to add the bleed um, so we're just going to get that to a point where we want it to be um, hit E on your keyboard to transform it so now we can scale this up a little bit Let's see what happens there too much yeah you know I know I'm not gonna get it as perfect as I had on the on the left I'm just, it's gonna be a little bit off but that's okay um, the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let me jump and sample this green real quick. I'm going to drag this into my swatches over here so I can continually use it without having to keep doing that. Same thing with this uh, little light beige color right here. 
I'm going to drag that into my swatches. So now I have the green and the beige. All right, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna make a rectangle that basically spans both of these images so you don't see where they meet, which is a pretty cool little effect right there. And we're gonna fill that with the green. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Command C and Command F. So what I did was I, I copied the, the rectangle and now I pasted it in front of itself. I'm now going to fill it with this tan color and I'm going to now hold option when I when I scale this down because well, let me back up if I don't hit option it's just gonna scale it down right there if I do option, it's gonna scale it down right through the center which is what I wanted um, the next thing we're gonna do is you're basically gonna take the I'm actually gonna lock all this by hitting command 2 so I can drag this over um, you're going to take the logo that is provided and you're just going to well I'm just gonna go option option click shift which option copies elements uh, we're not going to go to object arrange bring to front which is shift command I believe open bracket or close bracket excuse me so now we have our logo right on on top right in the middle all right so we're we're moving along pretty well um, the next thing I want to show you is I want to you can either make another rectangle but where are you gonna learn anything in this tutorial if I keep having you do the same stuff well actually that's how you learn anyway but you want to now go to option click and we're gonna shift this down because like I said you can make another rectangle or you could copy what you already had we're now gonna zoom in here and with a on our keyboard we're gonna click on the line segment and we're gonna make that a little bit higher I'm basically trying to match everything right, piece by piece I'm gonna zoom back in here we're now gonna to go to option click we're gonna shift that down hit a on our keyboard and we're gonna move that up a little bit more and we're gonna fill that in with black coming to our swatches right here the last thing I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna go to option click and I'm going to with again with a on the keyboard we're going to fill that with that light color right there and now we got our different three different areas okay working I guess from the uh, bottom up I want to come into my stroke right here which is also, I believe, S on the key. Uh, no, it's uh, parentheses um, or forward slash, excuse me. So we're going to now click here. We're going to hold shift while we do it because if you don't hold shift, that's going to happen. We're going to let it go at the end. We're going to fill the stroke in with white. Zoom in so you can see what's happening down here. And we're now going to come into the stroke options and we're going to come here to show options. And we're going to click on the little item that says dashed line and I'm gonna take that down a little bit I'm gonna take that down to like five points and you're gonna see that dashed line which is gonna ah, which is gonna be that perforation where they're gonna eventually be able to tear it off okay. all right I'm liking that so far you can notice that on here on mine I did a lot less points it's probably like three two points something like that on here I did five so it changes up a little bit there's a million ways to do things in these programs as you know uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to let's see how I did this correctly all right literally just make a text box you can either click and make the text box or you can make a text box by clicking down and marking and and determining the exact size of the text box but I like to just click and on my own text line I'm going to hit escape after I type in there. I'm just basically going to do that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to option click shift that down to copy it. Uh, let's see. What did I do in here? I did one, two. I did three separate text boxes. I could have done one long text box and made extra spaces in here to put these lines in there. Um, whatever you like to do. So I'm just going to copy my text. I'm going to paste it here. I'm now going to go to option click shift and leave a nice space right there. All right, now I'm copy and pasting option click shift. All right, now if you've been following my tutorials for a while and you've and you've learned my style of design, um, in the beginning people were kind of uh, wondering why um, why that. I was copying certain elements over and then and then copy and pasting it to there. It's because it makes it much quicker, you know, to go up to the text tool and do a whole nother thing. It's it's going to take a little bit of time. So um, what I like to do is I like to work as efficiently and quick as possible 
um, with keeping your layout pretty clean because you got to realize the client might come to you and trash the whole entire design and if you spend so much time refining it then you actually wasted all that time so uh, what I'm now going to do in here is I'm going to um, come in here I'm going to make a little line segment I'm going to fill it with that beige color definitely too thick of a stroke I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make it half a point and I'm now going to come into well, I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to get to my uh, my selection arrow. I'm going to go to option click. I'm going to shift that over. And the other thing I wanted to say is that, um, you know, some people have this notion that it has to be perfect. It has to be perfectly, you know, uh, spaced out. And, and, you know, it does actually. But you can do this stuff through eye. You know, you don't have to look at your uh, info panel and get the exact measurements. And, oh, it's off of, uh, you know, a thousandth of an inch. Don't, you're going to go crazy with that type of stuff. Um, you know, I'm very anal when it comes to this stuff, but I also, like I just said a minute or two ago, it's not about wasting time. You want to be efficient, as efficient as possible. So that's how you do that little area right there. Um, I don't have to go over text boxes, so I'm literally just going to uh, copy these over because these are simple text boxes. Um, I used... Uh, Century Gothic for the fonts on here because they're pretty easily readable um, and it's different than this wacky font of St. Patrick's Deli. Um, all right, last thing, same thing in here. Um, what I like to do is I'll do something like this. I'll do, I'll copy it over, right? And then I'll copy it down here again. I'll scale it down. Change it to black text. Oh, what am I doing here? Change to black text and then do your next, just like the copy on the left, just to you know streamline, get this a lot done a lot quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all these over. Option click shift or shift click. Let's see, option click and then shift. All right, there you go. I was right the first time. So what I want to do up here is something pretty cool. Um, and it's, you know, it's a basic thing, but it's something that you can do in your layouts. Um, I'm going to type out the word we deliver. And this font, see, you know, when you, you get free fonts off the internet to use, you got to make sure that they have all different types of variations. Like, you know, this one, there's no numbers, um, but I did like it for the purpose of this. So I use it anyway. But I can't use lowercase letters with this font. It'll actually disappear. It won't, you know, show up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what is the name of this font? All right. The name of the font is Stone Cross. Now, let's see. I'm going to fill it with the color we've been using throughout the whole layout so far. I'm going to shrink this a little bit. And because it's on this layer, you see, it's going to get hidden behind that. Pretty cool, right? All right. So. Look at the we deliver over here and look at the we deliver over here. I do not like the way the D comes out on this font. It's hard to read and on important stuff like we deliver, you don't want it to be confusing to people or look like you, you screwed that up. On other text in the in the layout, I would, I would get away with it, but not on something that's big and prominent. So what we're going to do here is we're going to zoom in and we're going to come up to type and we're going to go to create outlines. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this I and we're going to go to option click shift. So we're going to copy that I over and we're now going to take a, a take the pen tool. We're going to select, make a selection right around this D to right about here. We're going to come up. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to take the color out of that because this whole thing, part of that old D I'm taking out of there. So it doesn't look funny anymore. With that little selection path I made, hit A on your keyboard, and you're now going to hit hold shift, and so you're going to select an additional element. So now you have two elements selected. You're going to come into your Pathfinder tool, which is in here, saved on my toolbar as a favorite. I am going to now come into the shape mode. The second one to the top left is a minus front. And basically I just mine I subtracted that shape from the D. So if you don't learn anything else in this tutorial, you just learned something pretty damn cool that you can mess around with fonts and change things around and you're not set in stone with them. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. But now you can, you can, well, yeah, you can deliver it. You can, uh, 
read that. Um, next thing I'm going to do basically is I'm going to take this shamrock. I'm just going to put it back here. You can, um, what you can do from the logo is you can hit A on your keyboard, select the shamrock, hit Command C to copy it. Now hit Command V because it won't be grouped with it anymore as long as you recopy it, which you just did by hitting Command V. You're going to put place it right up here. Um, as it is right now, it's on a 10% opacity. And are there any transparencies on here? I don't believe so. Nope. Just a 10% opacity. If it wasn't opaque, then it would look like that. So we just back up Command Z so it looks like that. All right, now that is the first side. All right, so now we're going to design the second side of this piece. But I just realized I had you create that second artboard in the beginning. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to basically take the same artwork from the front. I'm going to copy it to the back. So you could do that really two ways. Uh, we could take everything from the front and go to option click and we can shift everything over. Or what we could do is you could come into your artboards right here. You could grab your artboard number one or whatever you decide to name it. Drag it to a new layer just like you would do with the layers palette. And well, actually I had something in the way, but it would actually duplicate that artboard. Uh, I just want you to actually physically see it happen. So you can see, oh, there you go. So you have a new artboard with that exact artwork. So let me back up a second. I'm literally just gonna copy this stuff over. So option click, shift everything over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, delete a couple things. I'm gonna delete these images in the middle. I'm gonna move my logo out here for a, a second. And I'm gonna, I am gonna come back to that later. Let me see something real quick. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave this. Dun, dun, dun. Take that out. I'm going to leave everything from here down because it is going to be the same. And I'm just going to be designing basically this area and then the top. So uh, let's start at the top. We're going to delete that we deliver. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to hit A on the keyboard and I'm going to hold shift now to select these two elements. And I'm going to come into my pathfinder. I'm going to unite them. So now it's one letter. I'm now going to select that letter. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to take this whole piece using my regular arrow or V on the keyboard. I'm going to delete it. So now I have the D letter right there. I'm actually didn't need to copy it because it wasn't um, grouped with it originally anyway. So we're now going to, we're going to put that D on the side for a second. Uh, we're going to type out the try us. For your next office party. And I might just have to do that. Oh, wait, they don't actually exist. Let's see, try for your next office party. All right, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type out made fresh daily. Okay. Hit escape after, you always hit escape the end, end of the selection. I'm now going to center that text. And I'm going to come into my character, which is also over here. And I'm going to make the letting on this a little bit higher, which means spacing uh, after each line. So the, the, the words, actually, I don't want them to be too, that too far apart. There we go. That's good. I'm now going to go to create outline, shift, command, zero. Or, oh, excuse me. And I'm going to pull that D back. I'm going to place it where it needs to be. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and delete these two D's daily and, and that one right here. I'm just going to move this down. I'm going to hit E on my keyboard to transform it and scale that down till it looks visually correct. All right, we're now going to go to option click and we're going to shift that down over here. Oops. All right, let me do that again. Option click, shift that down. All right, so made fresh daily. Now you can actually read it. Uh, like I said earlier, it was it, that was a little bit of a problem. Um, I'm now going to come back into Photoshop, and I'm going to go to that image of the wraps. All right, I am going to create a layer, uh, a a mask that uh, fades to nothing, so it'll actually help us to have this effect right here. Um, where it goes basically from the the it gradates right into itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the background layer. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to now hit OK because now I can edit it. I'm going to come into here to the add layer mask tool and I'm going to come into a brush and, and let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit. All right. 
The way you make it bigger and larger from the keyboard is the open bracket or closed bracket. All right, and now with black as my foreground color, I'm just going to literally click. I'm going to hold the shift down, and I'm going to move from left to right. It's going to give me that little look right there. I'm now going to literally save that same PSD that I was working on before, and we're going to jump back into Photoshop Illustrator. We're now going to go to File Place. All right, actually, you know what? Before we do that, go to Option, Click, Shift. We're going to have that same image come back over here, the Meeple Hero. And we're going to replace this image. So we're going to click the image with the direct selection or A on the keyboard. And we're going to come up to the image up here, which you can also find in your links panel. So let's go to window links. And we're going to click on that image. We're going to hit the options and go to relink. And we're going to link it with image 2psd Okay. And with A selected on our keyboard, we're going to move this up. And we are going to scale it by hitting E on the keyboard. Let's scale that up a little bit. Okay. All right. That is a little bit, a little bit more. That looks about right. Cool. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to literally just go to Option Click. We're going to copy this down and we're going to turn it green. And we're going to type out assorted wraps, wrap platters, excuse me, hit escape. And now we're going to scale that up. Hold shift while you do everything. Always have your left hand by the keyboard. Very important. Um, these are simple text boxes. So I'm just going to go to option click. I'm going to shift these over. Uh, here is a line segment. So I'm going to hit the line segment tool, or again, that's the forward slash. And we're going to come into our stroke right here and we're going to put black in it. We're going to make that stroke a half point. So I can really be that thick. Look kind of funny then. <clears throat> All right, let's see what's next on our agenda. All right, down here, let me just make sure what I did. What did I do there? Okay, we're going to make a rectangle right here. Remember, we're going to leave that little white space right down there before the black. And all right, normally let's just say there was black in there. All right, we're gonna come into our gradient and we're just gonna make a new gradient that goes from white to that color that we selected earlier. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come into my gradient or G on the keyboard and we're gonna click from the top, hold shift and go to the bottom. And now we're gonna go to object, arrange, send to back. All right. And that's going to assure that even if we have the color go into this, this image, that mask that we did in Photoshop is going to allow it to, to um, make it fade into it, you know, without having a problem. Um, and basically the rest of this stuff is actually pretty simple. Um, what I did originally is I knew I wanted the logo on the side. So um, I put the logo here first. I'm going to scale that. Put the logo here first, and then I design everything around it. So yes, small, medium, and large platter. Maybe what I maybe what I could have done looking back right now is I could have made small, and medium just a tiny bit smaller to kind of match large platter because that kind of looks like it's getting lost a little bit. Um, so at that, I'm just realizing this now, but I would fix that. Uh, but basically, I'm just going to copy this stuff over. Um, what I what I ended up doing here was I ended up literally. Um, and actually, I'll show you how to do this because this is important. Um, there's a few ways of doing this. You can use the blend tool or you can do it this way. I like doing it this way because it's quicker for me. Uh, I'm going to come up to the rectangle tool, hold it down. You'll find an ellipse tool. We're going to zoom in. What we're going to do is gonna, we're going to make one little dot right there. And we're going to come into Option, click, again, Copy, Shift. And now we're going to hit Command D over and over. And it's just going to keep given that same spacing that you did right after the first one. So that's something that you can do there, which is pretty nice. And let's see, what you want to do is do the same thing to this. I'm not going to select any of those. I'm going to copy it over. Okay. One way you could do it is you could do, you could take this down here as one, and then you can again, copy it and then hit command D. All right. 
That's one way of doing it. Or another way of doing it is literally just taking this whole thing, copying it down, taking this board platter and going to Command 2, which is going to lock it, and then just deleting the ones that are right at, actually, let me back up. Leaving the ones that are right after to give it that perfect spacing. And the last thing we need to add on here is that large platter. I'm literally just going to copy this over because by this time, if you've been following along, you're an expert. You want to make sure all this stuff lines up at the left. So you want to select all this. You want to come into here, your horizontal align left tool. You can also find these in the window align options. That's just a kind of a shortcut to it. And that's how you design the second side. The next thing we're going to do is add the bleeds. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're basically going to set this up for print, and we're going to add bleeds on this. So when you send this off to a printer, they're going to have the file basically set up correctly for you. So what I want to do first is I want to come into the layers, and I want to unlock this one layer. Um, actually, I want excuse me, I want to turn it off. So I don't want obviously that to print because they'd have to hit it perfectly on the die with the die cut to uh, not show any of that white. So just don't put the white there and they're just gonna cut through it anyway. Um, what we're now gonna do is we're going to come to object and we're gonna come to unlock all if anything is locked, but nothing is. So that's why you don't see that able to be selected right now. We're now gonna hit command A to select all and we're gonna come up to type create outlines or shift command O. <clears throat> so we're not gonna have any issues with fonts here. Okay. Starting with the images, because they're in clipping masks, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hit A on our keyboard, the direct selection, click the edges of here, and then, um, ooh, I'm sorry, back up one second. We're going to go to view. We're going to, um, where the heck are you? I think it's going to show our guides. Guides, show guides. Yep, there we go. It's going to bring back our bleeds that we had in the beginning, the bleed lines. So again, we have that line selected. We're going to hit, I'm going to hit five, six, seven, eight, nine, nudge it over and nine times. All right. So that's going to add the bleed on there. Nine. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with this image right here. <clears throat> Basically, the images were hidden within those clipping masks. And now you're opening up the clipping masks. Because if you have this all, it's, if you have these bleeds set from the, from the get go, <clears throat> It's gonna, it's gonna kind of bother. I mean, it's gonna throw everything off for me at least. Um, you can hit, hit A on your keyboard to scale it up a little bit so there's more bleed. Um, because if I, if you look, that's the edge in the image. Um, same thing in here. We're gonna come to the edge. Same thing here. Okay. So now that I did those important images, I'm going to select one, two. Excuse me. One two and three images i'm going to go to object lock selection or command two and that's because i'm going to add the bleeds to everything else and i just don't want to select that accidentally so we're going to hit a on our keyboard and we're going to literally go from the top to the bottom and it's going to grab all these points to the left and we're going to go nine i mean come on i can't make it any easier than that so let's see we're going to hit click the bottom and we're gonna go from the top same thing over here top the bottom left and then right so let's see All right, cool. So now we have our document with our bleeds and very simply, we are going to now go to file. We're going to save as and we're going to type it letter S and we're going to uh, make an Adobe PDF. We're going to make sure we're using all our boards. So just do all for now and we're going to save it to our desktop to see what happens. I'm just going to do a, a default setting I like to use. I usually do a high quality print. Um, if I want a smaller file, I'll uncheck preserve illustrated editing capabilities. Um, I will then click trim marks in the marks and bleeds area and then bleeds. I'll click that up. It'll make one eighth, which is 0.125 inches. I'm now going to hit uh, save PDF. All right. I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to jump into our desktop and see what happened. All right. Where the heck did I save this thing? 
I save it in that untitled folder? Hold on. I did. Oops. Let me pull that to my desktop. Let me double click that. And let's see what we got here. Make sure we got no problems with this file. All right. So you go to page one. You got the crop marks added. You got everything in there. You got page two, crop marks added, everything in there. And that's it, everybody. We are good to go. That, that little ding that just happened um, is not symbolizing the end of the tutorial. That's actually an email. But we are at the end of the tutorial. So that was kind of ironic. I uh, hope you learned a lot in this video. All right, so thanks for checking out another episode of the Graphic Design Layout Bootcamp. Please let me know in the comments below what you learned in this video that you did not know before. And please share it out on your social networks. A lot of work gets put into these videos, so if you're learning from it, please share it out so other graphic artists can learn too. There are a few more videos in this series, so definitely stay tuned to them. Here are a few uh, of the last couple of videos you can uh, take shortcuts to. Uh, but also subscribe to my channel and take the challenge. Take the files I have provided to you and redo them into some other type of graphic design layout. Send them to me, I'll critique them, or I will share them out with my social network. So I will see you all for the next episode of the Graphic Design Layout Bootcamp. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you very much. Peace.